Welcome virtual GED students to another virtual GED class. Today we're going to be talking about decoding word problems and it is a skill uh, and it's often the skill here that separates the math people from the non-math people. Can you read a word problem and try to figure out what the heck is going on? So today's going to be kind of a skill building experience. We're going to be building those muscles. It's going to be less about the word problem and more about the understanding of the word problem as we go along. But why am I doing a class like this? It's because students love memes like this. They send them to me all the time. But I get this one sent to me a lot. Um, something like, how many pancakes can you fit on the roof if a giraffe is 18 feet tall and gasoline costs two fifty a gallon? None, because aliens don't wear hats. And of course, I know what you guys are all trying to say to me. You're trying to tell me that word problems don't make sense and math teachers make dumb statements about them all the time. I am hoping today that we can make our word problems seem a little less like this and make a little more sense to us with some of the skills that we're going to develop, okay? So let's get going here. Okay, so here I have um, a bunch of information and I wanted to do this with you guys because I have a problem with GED students. I love you guys. You're my favorite. I don't know how many times I need to restate that, but I have a problem with the way you do word problems, which is basically you just kind of start mushing numbers together and hoping you're doing the right thing. And what you don't do a lot of times is go figure out what the question is. Like, what are you actually trying to find? So let's just go ahead and look at this uh, silly little thing I wrote out here. Okay, so Kate has six teenage girls aged 13, 15, 17, 17, 18, and 19 years old. They eat $1,500 a month in groceries, spend three hours each per day on social media. I'm that probably downplaying both of those numbers. Between them, they have 17 ex-boyfriends and three current Rocky relationships. Kate yells at her daughters 15 times a day. I just gave you a ton of information. Information, information, numbers, left and right. But what did I not do? I did not ask you a question. <laughs> And yet I know 75% of my GED class would already be picking up their calculators, typing in crap, finding stuff, all kinds of stuff. And nowhere yet has there been a question. And I'm always mystified, like, what are you doing? Where I, I, I could now ask you, you know, what color is the sky? And it wouldn't be that nice of me because I set you up with a lot of information. You're not thinking about the sky, you're thinking about my daughters, but nonetheless, I haven't asked you anything yet. You don't know what I'm going to ask. So let's just play a little game, you guys. Based on the information you've been given, what could you answer? What kind of questions could be asked? What's the mean of the ages of your daughters? Sure. I could answer that. Mean of ages. What else? How much each one eats per month. So you're thinking money for food for each daughter? Yes. Okay. Per daughter per month, yeah, for sure. And then uh, how many hours a month they're on social media? Mm. How many boyfriends okay. they all have? Yeah, how many does each daughter have? Oh, boyfriends per daughter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just by the way, the rule is no dating, okay, y'all? No dating, but no one listens to mom around here. Okay, keep going. <laughs> keep going. What else could we answer? How many times a day you yell at your kids or well, daughter? Well, how about how many times a month? Because it's already... Um, sure, I could do yells per daughter per day, or I could do total yells per month. Yeah, or the mean of every number in the whole thing. I suppose I could do the mean of every number and the whole thing, uh, but what would that mean? What's the meaning? So you're never going to see a thing with a word problem that doesn't have meaning. So we probably wouldn't have the mean of all these things because uh, remember when we talked about a, um, addition and subtraction being adding up the same things? If I were going to go to total something, I wouldn't total ages with dollars, with boyfriends, with doesn't make sense but I could find the average boyfriends per girl I could find the average years per girl any individual thing by itself does that make sense uh, no it's not David that yes. I could go find a mean of all these numbers I suppose I could it just wouldn't be a meaningful number does that make sense yeah sweet anybody mm -hmm. else think of anything else I could figure out based on this weird word problem or how much you spend per year on groceries mm. y'all could cry for me 
money per year on groceries. Now here's the deal. I'm not going to make you do this for much longer because I hope you're getting the point. The point is that I could really ask you, like, yeah. we could sit here for a long time and I could ask you hundreds of different questions. And depending on how I phrased it, you would go do yeah. something different. You would choose to use different numbers. You would choose different operations. Um, you know, it just depends on what I ask. So I really, 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 if we do nothing else today, want us to start slowing down and thinking about not only what we've been given, obviously that was important, but also <laughs> what we've been asked to find, where we're going with that information. Now, I'm just going to tell one more story to drive it home. I know I'm kind of irritating that way, but then we will pick up our examples. But this is my, my um, thing. I am a horrible driver. So if you think I'm really good at algebra, which I am, I, I am the polar opposite when it comes to directions. I am so spatially challenged. I can leave my house, turn right, and I don't know how to get back to my house. It's like it disappeared. <laughs> that is how spatially challenged I am, okay? So I have a problem. You know, I'll ask people directions, like how do you get to fries? And they will not... I won't know where to start. Like, they'll give me answers like, oh, fries is, you know, it's kitty corner across from the other thing if you know where the thing is and you go from the thing up to the thing around the, and I'm always like, um, can you give me directions to fries from my house? Like, if I'm leaving my house and I live at this address, how do I get from, I need every turn from my house to fries. <laughs> You know, and based on where I'm leaving from, if I'm leaving from my house or I'm leaving from the school or it, those directions are going to vary. Right. So the point I'm trying to make here is it's the destination matters in a word problem. But what also matters is what you've been given, where you're starting. So where you're going and where you're starting are the two things you need to know in order to know how to get there. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's yes. go practice it. Here we go. So here's the deal. I'll just let you know that based on what I know of the students that are in this room with me, I've given some pretty simple word problem examples, okay? Most of you guys could solve these problems without going through these steps necessarily. But I'm going to ask you to track through these steps with me. We're going to do some things in order to decode and understand word problems. Why? Because the word problems on the GED are not um, single step word problems, simple like these. They are much more complex, but we're going to learn a bunch of skills individually, including what we do today, and put them all together in the context of multi-step word problems later. So for now, we're just developing a set of skills, okay? So have patience with me, even if you know how to solve the problem right from the start. Is that fair enough, you guys? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so here we go. Um, let us take a look at number one. Um, number one says, Jose earns $540 for a 40 hour work week. Uh, what is Jose's hourly rate of pay? Now, the first thing that I asked you to do here in my directions, number one is just to read each word problem one time through. So check, I did that. Strong work, Kate, you read the word problem. Okay, but the next thing I want us to do is highlight the question, what we are being asked to find. So take a look at number one and just humor me, guys. What is the question? What are they asking us to find here? The hourly rate. How much you make for hour? Yeah. Absolutely. And David said it outright, the hourly rate of pay. Now, I love that Maricela said how much he makes per hour because the very next thing I'd like you to do Take a look at number three. I want us to paraphrase the question in our own words in the space provided. You guys, paraphrase is a word from the RLA test. What does paraphrase mean? Uh, your own way of understanding the question? Yes, it's to rewrite an idea in your own words. Okay. It is the biggest skill you use when writing the RLA essay you have to paraphrase what the authors say again and again. So look at us practicing for more than one test at a time. So I liked Maricela's peri paraphrase of what is Jose's hourly rate of pay. She said they're asking me how much does he make each hour? Okay, so today I'm gonna to ask you to slow down, even if you're a word problem ninja, and take the time to paraphrase the question in your own words. Now here's the thing about a paraphrase, it's in your own words. So 
Will mine match yours or match Mary Silla's? Not necessarily. So just, I have a couple other people in class. Did anybody else want to give it a try? Um, did you think of a different way to paraphrase? How else could I say what is Jose's hourly rate of pay? You guys are like, Mary Silla said it the most beautiful way. It just can't even be said any better. <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm thinking of some ways. Sometimes we say, how many dollars per hour does he make? Okay. So mm -hmm. you could say that. You could say, um, how much money does he make in one hour? There's a lot of different ways we could phrase this question, but the idea would be the same, you know, um, that, that would all mean the same thing, okay? So don't get hung up on exactly how you phrase it, I think is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so we said that two things would really affect our problem solving method. One is where we're going. So like when I say, I'm gonna go to the store, I'm gonna go to Fry's, you know, so that's our question. But the other thing is our starting location. Where are we starting from? That's our given. Okay, so let's go looking through this problem. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go highlight our given information. And I'm gonna use a different color for that. So I don't know, let's use green. So what information do we know? What have we been given so far? Uh, we've been given how much money he makes for a 40-hour work week. Mm -hmm. We know he makes 540 hours for a 40-hour work week. So I'll highlight that in green, and then I'm just going to take notes of it down here. So this $540, what is this amount? Um, the maximum amount. So it's, it's like the number of whatever he was making hourly, but like it's – all crunched into one. Yeah. All crunched into I love I like what that you're saying. Okay, what were you thinking, Mary Sella? Is the total of he yeah, was the total, that's the word David was reaching for, I feel like. Yeah. That's the total dollars he's gonna make for all forty of his hours. Now and only now am I gonna let you answer the question we answered last week, which is what operation should I use here? So you guys, what mathematical operation should I use? Division. Absolutely, division. As David said, that number's all crunched together right now. Mary Sella said, it's a total. We're going to need to take that total and divide it into same size pieces. So help me write the expression. What's the mathematical expression that I could write in order to solve this? Remember, I said that when we divide, we need to make sure that the total comes first. We're used to long division when we flipped it around. But long division is scratch work. I don't care about your long division if you do it or you don't do it or you use a calculator. But that divide by symbol is what we use when we write mathematical expressions. So super important with divide by the total comes first. Okay, so I'm going to start with the total. So what should I start with? Um, 540. Yeah, there you go. And then I'm going to break it into how many pieces? 40. Exactly. If each hour he makes the same amount, then that's like 40 groups. Yeah. Pay. And so we take the total and we divide by whatever group uh, uh, information we know. Um, so then my solution would be? That's a good question. Let me get my calculator out. <laughs> Huh. Like, I'm not even trying to do long division now that you told me I don't have to, Kate. 13.5. There you go. 13.5. Thank you, Mary Sella. We did everything we wanted to do. We made sure we organized our information with the unit. We did the correct operations and wrote an expression. So we used a calculator. But the last thing says, give the solution as part of a complete sentence with a unit. Um, I'm not actually going to ding you for the complete sentence thing since the GED wouldn't, but a lot of math teachers would because if they talk to you in sentences, it's a word problem, they're going to expect you to answer in sentences. The reason yeah. why we do that, and so it's a good habit for you, even though it's not required on the GED, the reason why we do that is because we want you to think about whether or not your answer makes sense. So like sometimes students will tell me something like, they'll accidentally do their division backwards, David, maybe, and then they'll tell me something like, 0 0.07, he makes seven cents an hour. <laughs> and by writing it in a complete sentence, we hope that they might go, oh, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> That's our dream. That's our dream that y'all would just consider if your answer makes sense, okay? So this is 13.5 what? Dollars. Yes, dollars. dollars. Jesus. Per hour. Now I got to say something. This doesn't look like dollars to me. 13.5. We don't usually talk about money this way. Yeah, do another, we? Zero. Yeah. another zero. Exactly. Money can have no decimal places or two decimal places, but I, we very rarely see it with only one. Unless you're in a really fancy upscale restaurant for some reason. <laughs> I guess I should put it in a complete sentence and not be a big hypocrite. So he makes 13.50 per hour. So this is all we're going to do today. We're just going to develop these skills. 
Um, again, slow down with these word problems and try it out this way. And just to let you know, I have two levels of practice when you go to practice this, you guys. So some of you guys are just at the part where you're starting to make word problems make sense, and that's fine. The beginning level practice only has mostly one-step problems. But some of you guys are like, hey, these are too easy. Yeah, I'm making them easy for the video, but you can go attempt these same skills with the style of multi-step problems that are on the GED in the experience level practice. So number two says, Felipe's net pay last pay period was $872.32. If his total taxes and deductions came to $239.01, what was his gross pay? Okay, so once again, the first thing I'd like you to do is just go find the question. Okay, don't mush numbers together until you know what they're asking. So help me out, guys. Where's the question? Um, they're asking how much is the gross pay, so how much he made altogether. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes. So notice that there's taxes and deductions here. When you say gross pay, I like that you said how much does he make altogether. Is that his pay before taxes or after taxes? Gross is before. Exactly. And that would be a super important um, common money word that they're expecting you to know. So if you don't know that word, you should take note of it somewhere. So they're asking me to find how how much money he made total, as David put it, or how much money before taxes. So now the next thing, again, it's not only important about where we are going, but it's also important to know what we're starting with. So what information am I starting with? What do I currently know? Um, you know what the net pay period exactly. was, how much it was. Exactly. The net pay was that much. And you Absolutely. also know what the deductions were. The taxes and deductions were, thank you for not getting fooled by that word total. <laughs> that's not his total pay, but that's his total taxes and deductions, absolutely. Okay, so we'll just organize that information. Notice when I organize information that I always, always, always write my unit, and I give myself just enough words to know what this number means. I have not met a single student who naturally wants to do that. You guys are kind of like, I'm lazy, I just want to write down the number. And you know, that's great, but it, when you have multi-step word problems that have like four or five steps, y'all get all totally lost in your work and don't know how to get found again. So labeling your numbers <laughs> can help you know what you're doing, okay? Really good idea. Okay, so I have those two given. So then what operation should I use? Addition. Addition. Why'd you choose addition? A lot of people would tell me subtraction to take out the taxes. Yeah, but they're already taken out. They're already taken out and we want the gross. We want when the taxes were in. So we got to put them back in. Okay, wonderful. So we're going to do addition. So somebody give me an expression that would work to do this. Um, $872.32 plus $239 and one penny. Wonderful. You know, there's different ways to write expressions. So if your expression doesn't match my expression exactly, it would be super important to be able to evaluate are our expressions equivalent. You know, so um, obviously we could add this in the other order and it wouldn't matter. But I'm just going to let you know when I was writing the answer sheets for these problems for your homework, you guys, I did not take the time to write every possible expression. So you're going to have to use a little bit of common sense to say, wait, is what I'm doing equivalent to what Kate's doing? Would we get the same answer? Because just because your expression doesn't match mine exactly doesn't mean we're not equivalent. Okay, so now, of course, you can use your TI uh, to add up these numbers because whenever we have word problems on the GED, hallelujah, we have a calculator. And so I get this solution, 1112.33. But once again, let us test that our solution works using that unit and that context. So let's put this in a complete sentence with a unit. This is 1112.33 what? Dollars. <laughs> Dollars. Yep. And this is his gross pay. So I would say something like his gross pay. Now, does this make sense? Does it make sense for his gross pay to be $1,112.33 if his yeah. net pay was 872? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, it absolutely makes sense. We're expecting his gross pay to be a bit more than his net pay. You know, gross, they call it gross because it's fat or it's larger. No, this is easy. You guys are like, these are easy, Kate. Cool. Let's do some more. Let's take a look at number three. So we'll just read it first. When Mr. Potter ran for re-election, he received 110,987 votes, and his opponent received 89,021 votes. 
Again, don't assume you know what you're doing until you read the question, y'all. I could ask you lots of different things. How many more votes did Mr. Potter receive than his opponent? All right, let's start by highlighting the question. What is the question? How many more votes did, did he receive than his opponent? So I was asking you, out of the two numbers, like who had more? I almost agree with you, except for if you just said who had more, I'd say to you, Mr. Potter. Yeah, Mr. Potter had more. Yeah, but they're looking for a number, right? So phrase it a little clearer for me so that I understand they're looking for a number and not a person. Anybody? How else could I phrase this? How many more votes did Mr. Potter receive? Let's paraphrase that in our own word. Well, the math word we used for this um, a couple classes ago was the difference. Whether you're talking about how many more or how many less, you're talking about how different the two numbers are. And so we call that the difference. So that would be one way I could rephrase it. It's certainly not the only way. It's just the way that comes to mind for me. So the difference between Mr. Potter's and his opponents. Now, would you be wrong if you had written it? And I know there's lots of ways to paraphrase this, but that works for me. I should probably include the word votes though. The difference between Mr. Potter and his opponent's votes. If I don't put votes, then I, I feel like we're asking, what's the difference between me? Like Mr. Potter's the Republican. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so now let's go looking not only, of course, where we're going, but where we're starting. What have we been given? Um, we've given the amount Mr. Potter had and the amount his opponent has. Yeah, absolutely. What was the amount Mr. Potter had? 110,987 votes. Good. And then you said his opponent had? 89,021 votes. Beautiful. So again, if I list out my given, and especially for students who get lost in word problems, list out your givens with the units. It will help you. You know, I'm too lazy to spell Mr. Potter, okay? We'll call him Mr. P. What's up? <laughs> 110,000 votes there. And then the opponent, are you down with OPP? No, they weren't, or they would have voted differently. Okay. Uh, 89,000. Y'all, did I just date myself? Do any of you even know the song OPP? No, just me. Just me alive in 1992. It's fine. Okay. 89,021. I shouldn't ask you what year you were born on YouTube. Never mind. I was going to ask you guys what year you were born just so I could rub it in how old I am, but I'll just leave that off. Okay. So there's Mr. P's votes and the opponent's votes. So tell me, what should the operation be here? Uh, Yes, absolutely. How many more? How many less? The difference? It's all the same. It's all subtraction. Gorgeous. Now, here's a case, right, where order matters. Much like with division, order matters with subtraction. We said that a difference should always be the bigger number against a smaller one. Yeah, I'm going to start with the bigger one because difference should always be positive. So one easy way to make sure that difference is positive, especially if you're not comfortable with using absolute value bars, is just to make sure that the bigger number comes first. So then my solution, again, you can totally do it in your calculator, but I get this number out, but I need to make sense of my solution. So with a unit and a com complete sentence, what is my solution here? And I, I'm having you guys do it in your calculators, too, because I'm super sick of people on the internet telling me I have number mistakes in my videos, y'all. You are my editors. I can't afford any other ones. So <laughs> type this in your calculator for me and help me out. What's the solution? 21,966. But that's 21,966 what? Both. Mm -hmm. So he got 21,966 more votes. Okay. And does that make sense in context? Yeah, 20,000 more votes than your opponent. That makes sense to me. Okay. Sometimes people do weird things and tell me something like, he got 7.32 more votes than his opponent. I'm like, 0.32 votes, huh? Yes. How does that work? <laughs> no idea. Yeah. Parts of votes. Oh, and I only have eight problems, y'all, so it won't be a super long class. So don't cheer too loud. It'll hurt my feelings, but you can cheer on the inside. <laughs> Let's take a look here at number four. And my effort to have multicultural names continues. Fareed needs to type a document <laughs> that is 1,600 words. If he can type at a rate of 80 words per minute, how long will it take him? Okay, guys, help me find the question. Where's the question? How many words or how long in minutes will it take if he can write 80 per 80 words per minute? Jesus. Wonderful. So yeah, the how long will it take him? And I like that you said in minutes. Definitely. 
Um, so I'll use that in my paraphrase. We're asking <laughs> how many minutes to, I don't know, to, to, will it take him? Uh, take him to do what? To type the document? Is that fair? Sure, yeah. Great. That way you don't use words. Yeah, and just um, just to let you guys know when you're paraphrasing on the English test or on the RLA test, don't just change words, also change your sentence structure. Uh, a lot of students will just have the exact same sentence structure and just trade out two, three words. That's not a paraphrase. You're still plagiarizing. So it's important to make significant changes <laughs> um, to an unrelated topic. You know, I just love to get off topic. It's my favorite when your teacher is ADHD. <laughs> okay, so now let's go highlight our uh, given, guys. What have we been given? The 116,000 words that he needs to type. And... Uh -huh fact that he can type 80 per minute. Good. Now let's go organize that information as I go to talk about that there. This 1,600 words, what is this? Um, that is the full amount that he needs. Exactly. That's that total he needs to. And then how about this 80 words per minute? What is this? Um, that's what you're going to use to figure out the answer. That's true. But just like, what do we call that in life? If I tell you, I can type 80 words per minute, I'm talking about my what? What is that thing called? Your speed? Yeah, absolutely. There you go. Yeah. So I'm, I'm having a lot of brain for it. Well, that's okay. And I think we don't usually take the time to do this with word problems. And David, you tend to actually be pretty decent at word problems. So you might not actually need this step. But <laughs> I think this is the thinking process that a lot of students who do struggle with word problems really do need. So thank you for having patience with my weird questions. Okay, so then what operation would I use? Uh, you're going to use division. Absolutely. Now, a lot of students would not know that this is a division problem. So I know this is last class's purpose, but just remind me, why would this be division? Because you're the total. Exactly. I know that total and I'm breaking it up into equal size groups. Since I type the same amount each minute, that's chunking it into equal size groups. Wonderful. So help me write the division expression. And again, right when we're doing division, order matters. We've got to start with that total. So what should my expression be? 1600 divided by 80. That's right. David's like, I'm not getting a lecture from this woman again. Beautiful. So <laughs> here we go. Our solution then, 1600 divided by 80. And I get 20. 20 what? 20 minutes. Or, or minutes. <laughs> Absolutely. How long will it take him? How many minutes to type the document? It will take him 20 minutes. Or he could type it in 20 minutes. Maricela, how are you feeling? Good. I feel like as an English language learner, and you're not my only English language learner. I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but this is a super important class. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so let's go on to number five here. So it says Jack is 24 years older than his son Todd. If Jack is 37, how old is Todd? This is a problem I can usually fool a lot of students with. It looks simple, a little bit tricky. So let's go ahead and use our problem solving techniques. First of all, where is the question? Um, it's asking you how old Todd is. Mm -hmm. So what? what is Todd's age? Good, Todd's age. Just clarify for me, who's Todd, the son or the father? The father. Er, the father. Yeah. Having that is... is Wait, you said or, or, do you not agree with yourself? No, I, I had to read it again. <laughs> okay, so I'll, since David has to read it again, let's all go read it again. Jack is 24 years older than his son, Todd. If Jack is 37, how old is Todd? Okay, so we're finding Todd's age, but who? now that we reread it, is Todd the father or is Todd the son? He's the son. father. Oh, you guys don't agree. <laughs> let's draw a picture. Jack is 24 years old. Oh, yeah. Is yeah, but, uh -huh. Todd. And guys, the only reason I made you do this is because I actually had to draw it out myself to figure out which one was which because I kept getting twisted in the words. Okay, so there we got Jack and Todd. Okay, now that we know that we're finding Todd's age, tell me again, is Todd the father or the son? Todd is the son. Exactly. The son. Exactly. <laughs> the way the question was phrased most people expect Todd to be the father so okay now what have we been given uh, uh, we've been given the fact that Jack is 24 four years older we also know that Jack is 37 so Jack is 37 and we have that fact that Jack is 24 years older what is that 24 years older as I go to take note of that what is that thing um he it's what you're going to use 
to add. I, ag I agree with you, but what is it? How could we describe that 24 years? That word for that, again, is difference. Difference. <laughs> if you're 24 years older, that's that space between the two of you. That's the difference in their ages. So whether I'm saying Jack is 24 years older or I'm saying Todd is 24 years younger, I'm saying the same thing. There's 24 years between them. It's a 24-year difference. And then you said 37 was what? Uh, Jack's actual age. Jack's actual age. Okay, now, now that we know that we're finding the son's age, that we know Jack's age, and Jack, you told me, was the father, and that they have a 24-year difference, now tell me what the operation should be. Uh, addition. Okay, so David tells me addition. Now, David, I'm going to just play this out. I, just to let you know, no offense, addition's not the right answer, but it is the most common answer I get. So let's play with it and see how it works. So let's do this as addition. That's why I wanted to play this out, because... Sometimes we do things, I do things the wrong way all the time. It's just as a math teacher, when I go back and look at my answer, I go, oh crap, that didn't make sense. Something yeah. went wrong with my problem solving. Whereas students happily give me answers that don't make sense all day long. They're just like, look at this answer, that makes no sense. I'll be like, how many push-ups did you do yesterday? They'll tell me negative 51.3. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> Okay, so let's do it. So we are finding Todd the Sun, and Todd the Sun, I get a solution of Todd the Sun is 61 years old. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Yeah, it's wrong. That's that true. is why. What's <laughs> wrong? I mean, logically, why can't Todd the Sun be 61 years old? Well, because then he's not the Sun. It, then he's not the son. He can't be older than his father. So, you know, y'all will choose, you will choose incorrect operations. Um, we all do sometimes, but we've got to go back and rethink when our answers just don't make sense. Okay, so Todd the son can't be 61. So what did I do wrong? What should I have done if it shouldn't have, if it wasn't addition? Subtraction. Exactly. And very frequently, if you find your answer doesn't make sense, try the inverse operation. <laughs> like if you thought addition, try subtraction. If you thought multiplication, uh, try division. Try the inverse operation. See if it doesn't make more sense that way. Subtraction order matters. So who should I start with? Um, You're going to have to start with Jack. I'm going to start with Jack's age. Then I'll take away that 24 year difference. So 37 minus 24. And I have a son being 13 years old. Todd the son is 13. Now does it make sense? Yes. Makes sense for a son to be uh, younger than his father. And see how writing that complete sentence there and using this context can really stop us from making s common but silly errors? Yeah. Okay, I hope I'm selling you guys on my pain in the butt problem solving method. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Seller, are you okay with that one? Because I think I could fool 80% of GED students with that question. It was just confusing me to find the father and the son. Yes. But yeah, it was fine. When I drew the picture with Jack and Todd, did that help you see who had to be older yeah. and who had to be younger? Yes. Yes. And um, I just kept trying to do it in words with this student the other day. And they could not grasp it with words. But the second I drew a picture, it clicked for them. So don't yeah. be afraid. Like students think like pic there's something wrong with pictures. Pictures are great problem solving methods in math. In fact, sometimes I get mad at students and they're like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, did you not even try to draw a picture? <laughs> Why? <laughs> okay, let's take a look at Lee here. Lee has budgeted $75 per month for her cell phone. If her cell phone plan charges a flat fee of $15 and a charge of $0.08 cents per minute, y'all, this is how phone plans used to work, okay? We're in the old days now. Okay, how many minutes can she talk and still stay within her budget? Help me out. What is the question here? How many minutes she can use within her budget. So I want to know how many minutes or how much time. Since I'm rephrasing it, I'm just going to say how much time. Now everybody knows that obviously this is an old question because Lee wouldn't talk. Lee would just text nowadays because we're all scared to talk on the phone. But <laughs> we're looking at how much time she can talk and still stay within her budget. Oh, this is in a month. Do you guys know why I say it? It's, oh, it's in a month? Oh, yeah, because it says 75 per month. Yeah, and I just want to be clear because sometimes they can slip an extra step into the problem by saying something like, how many minutes How many minutes could she talk in a week? How many minutes could she talk in a day? How many minutes could she talk in a year? And then we'd have an extra step to our problem. So I just want to be clear that I know. Okay, is everybody okay with that? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so now what have I been given? 
You've been given the amount per month. Okay. And the fee, the, the one-time fee. Oh, I love that you called that a one-time fee. Yes. Super important to be able to time a, tell a one-time fee from a repeating fee. Good. And what else do I know? You also know that it's an extra eight cents per minute. Good. And that's that idea of a repeating fee. That's what I meant there. That eight cents a minute is going to get charged over and over and over again each time I talk for a minute. Whereas, as David said, that $15 fee, well, that's just a one time a month fee. That's that flat fee. Okay. So I, I'm going to go ahead and put that down like you guys said. I'm going to give myself a little room to talk about the 75 though. But since we already brought this up, he said the $15 is a one-time fee, it's just one time each month, but that eight cents is a repeated fee. Notice how I write about repeated fees. And you guys, I want to get you in this habit too. Use a slash for the word per. I want every GED student on the face of the planet to use a slash for the word per so you guys get used to the fact that per can be directly translated as divide. Wait, but, so I've got a question. So wouldn't it be one time for like ever instead of each month? Because it only says a flat fee of 15. Oh, so you know what, David? That might just per. be a problem with your GED teacher not writing um, clear word problems. <laughs> I meant that it was a one time per month fee and I didn't clarify, but the GED has been vetted by thousands of people already. It would be clear on the GED. There would be wording that would make you be able to tell. So sure. I'm sorry. Maybe I should have said something like a flat monthly fee. Yeah, that would have been better. That would have been better. David would approve of my word problems then. <laughs> if I can't figure that part out, then I'm like screwed. And yeah, like, no, you're right, though. That's exactly what you need to go looking for. That is exactly what you need to go looking for. And students who who don't know that distinction often make silly mistakes. And so, like I said, I can't afford editors. You guys are my editors. But the GED can afford editors. Believe me, their questions have been vetted. So they're going to make a, they've made a concerted effort to make sure that there is only one way to interpret that problem correctly. <laughs> Not that students can't misinterpret it. They'll be clear with their wording. Okay, is everybody good with that? Yeah. Okay, yes. so then let's look at that $75 per month, per month fee. What is that? Or that $75 per month. What is that thing? Uh, the 75 per month is the total number she's been given. Yeah, that's the total she has to spend. Beautiful. I'm really trying to get you guys good at spotting a total when you see one and it's working. <laughs> total she has to, oh my land. Words are much harder than numbers. <laughs> okay, this is a total she has to spend. Okay, so what operations should I use? This stuff, I've got more than one operation going on, don't I? Yeah, you're going to do uh, division and subtraction. I definitely do have division and subtraction. Cool. Now, we know, we've talked about this before, that division and subtraction are both ways to break up a total. But mm -hmm. subtraction is what we use to take out something that only comes out once. Yes. And division is what we use to take out a re something repeatedly, the same amount over and over again. So I think it's so wonderful that you clarified for me that this one fee was coming out one time, whereas the other one was coming out, you know, each time I... I talked for a minute. So mm -hmm. when I go to write the expression, whenever you have more than one operation going on, you guys are going to have to think about the order of operations. You can't ignore it. It's a thing that exists. So what would have to happen first if I were going to solve this problem? You're going to do 17 or 70, 70, 75 minus 15 divided by 0 0.08. Good. Now I'm just going to write this down. It's actually not correct yet. It's not that it's wrong. It's that it's not finished. Uh, but I want you to just really quickly, if you were to type it in your calculator and type this 75 minus 15 divided by 0 0.08, whether you realized it or not, you'd get this weird answer that doesn't make sense. Remember I told you it, it just makes me crazy when students give me weird answers that don't make sense. If I type it in just the way we have it written, I get negative 112.5. So I just want you to imagine that I said, how many minutes can she talk? And you told me she can talk for negative 112 minutes. <laughs> Doesn't make sense in context, right? No. I know you chose the right operations, uh, but the what messed up messed us up with was the order of operations. Does anybody remember what your calculator will do first? Your calculator follows the order of operations. So if you have both subtraction and the division in a problem, which one will happen first? We want the subtraction to happen first, but All according right, to division. the order of operations, you know, first groupings, 
then exponents, then all multiplication and division, and addition and subtraction comes last. So David, if you want to communicate to your calculator, do the subtraction first, you are going to have to group the subtraction. You are going to have to group the subtraction if you want to force your calculator to do it first. So I'm going to have to do 15 minus 75 and then divide by 0.08. I, yes, and you could just press enter in your calculator and do it in two steps if you want. But if I wanted to write out the whole expression, I would have to use parentheses. So just be aware that if you're writing out that entire expression, the expression is going to be subject to the order of operations. So make sure that you force it to go in the order you want it to go in. I just did it with parentheses and I did it without parentheses and it gave me the same uh, answer. Um, not if you typed the entire expression into your calculator. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, I did separate. Yes, when you do it separate, it works because you said do the subtraction first, enter, and you force the subtraction to come first, mm -hmm. and then you divide it. But if you type that entire expression in, so if you're writing expressions, groupings are important. That's what I'm trying to say. When you're writing out an entire expression, you need to make sure that you put in groupings when appropriate. So then what is my solution if it's not oh, negative 112? 750 is what I get. Yeah, 750. So this is 750 what? Minutes, I would say. Exactly. So she can talk 750 minutes each month. And that makes more sense than talking for negative 112 minutes. <laughs> now some GED students are mad at me because they wouldn't do the expression at all. They're like, Kate, I would just do 75 minus 15 in my calculator, press enter. And then once I'm done with that, take the answer that I got and divide by 0 0.08. And I got good news for you guys. If this was a problem where you were just finding the answer, you could totally do that and never have to write the expression and nobody would care. Good news. But the bad news is if this was one of those problems where you had to go pick a right expression out of there, I could easily fool you if you didn't check out what those expressions came to because you would just assume uh, that it would be without parentheses. Okay, let's look at number seven. It says Leonard buys three binders at three seventy-five dollars each, four reams of notebook paper for $1.25 each, and a TI-30XS calculator, hint, hint, go buy one, at, uh, for $17.95, less than 20 bucks, y'all. He uses a $2 off coupon and is charged $1.93 in sales tax. What is the cost of his purchases after any tax? Welcome to the GED. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Their word problems won't be single steps. They'll be multi-steps. But hey, we've got a lot of skills now. We've been working with them. Let's go ahead and see what we can do here. Let's start with our first step like we have been doing and just find the question. What is the question? Find the total of what he, he spent. Yes. Yeah. So the cost of his purchases after discounts and tax. Mary Marisela just kind of paraphrase that in her own word as the total he's going to end up paying. And I totally agree with that wording. Great. Did anybody want to say that another way? No, I like it like that. Yeah, it's concise. Yeah. Gorgeous. What have I been given? Uh, you've been given how much each binder is. How much each binder is. Okay. And, and how much uh, re four reams of notebook paper. I don't know how much four reams of notebook paper is. I only know that one ream of notebook paper is 125. Now, maybe that's what you meant, but I just want to make sure I'm being clear with my words, right? It says notebook paper is $1.25 each. So then what else do I know? The price of the calculator. The price of the calculator? And the $2 off coupon. And the $2 off coupon. Mm -hmm. And the uh, sales tax charge. And the sales tax, dear Lord. I know some more. What else do I know? So do me a favor, and I meant to spell them both out. Do not forget to tell me about numbers that are spelled out. Um, a lot of times GED students will just skip over them visually. So I also know how many binders he's buying, don't I? Uh, yeah, three. Yeah, three. yeah, watch that. And I should have spelled out four too. I actually meant to. Um, but he's buying four reams of notebook paper. A lot of times when we're just flipping through looking for important crap, your brain will just disregard words and only look for numbers. So watch yourself. Go back and make sure there aren't any words spelled out. I can usually get half my students by spelling a few words. So now as I go to organize my given, I have a lot more given than I used to. I'm going to want to put them in a logical order so it's not just numbers dumped everywhere. I'm gonna keep related numbers together. For example, I'm buying those three binders and each one of those three binders are costing me 375. So I'm gonna put those together. Three uh, binders at 375 each, it's related. Same thing for the notebook paper. I have four reams of paper 
at $1.25 each. And yeah, I wish I had a little more space for my given because I think I actually want to put the calculator under here as well. Since they're all costs, um, grouping them together makes sense for me. So there's all the things I'm buying. So I just kind of group them all together, makes sense. But that's not all I know here. I also know some changes to my order, right? I have this coupon and I have this sales tax. Mm -hmm. Now I got a lot going on here. I need to make a plan. What operations are going to go on if I try to find the cost of his purchase after any discounts and tax? Oh, wait, can you ask that one more time? Yeah. I And I actually am almost regretting this question in the order I have it. So I'm going to ask it one more time, but then I'll... Um, I said, what operations would I need to use uh, to uh, figure out the total cost of his purchases or the total he's going to pay? You're going to add... Yes, add. Yeah, there's definitely addition going on. Um, because I have these different costs, calculator costs, binder costs, reams costs. What here made you want to say subtraction, David? Oh, the $2 off coupon. There you go. Coupons come off. That would be subtracted out. Yeah, and that's not the only operation. There's another one I would still okay. use. Multiply, says Nicole. You see, a lot of operations, there's a lot going on. Nicole, what made you want to multiply? Do you have three of something at the same price? I have this repeated price, the same price going on over and over again. So a lot of planning to do. Let's go ahead. So we heard addition with adding up the different costs. We heard multiplication with these repeated costs. We heard subtraction to take off a discount. And this is how the GED will be. Complexity, complexity. Really important to be able to think through what you're doing and why you're doing it. Okay, so let's try writing our expression here. What do you guys want to do first? Multiply. I agree. My multiplication would happen first. Yes. Now, there's super good news. When we talk about the order of operation, we know in the order of operations that multiplication and division do come before adding and subtraction. Okay, so we're not going to have to use parentheses to force that to happen. We can just go ahead and write our multiplication expressions. So like 3 times 3.75, and we can add that with our four times 125. Because the order of operation already forces the multiplication to happen first, that'll work just fine. Does that make sense? And then I can add that with the 1795. There I am adding up all my costs. I just bought three binders, three times the price of a binder, and four times the price of paper, and one single charge for a calculator. And so there I have totaled up all my costs, uh, but that's not all I had going on, right? They didn't just want me to total the costs. We wanted the total of what he would pay after discounts and tax. So let's go ahead and deal with discounts and tax. So what will happen, David said, with that discount? Subtract $2. Subtract <laughs> that $2 off. And what will happen with tax? Um, It'll get added on. And since these are all dollar amounts, we can just add and subtract them all. Long and ugly expression, but it'll totally work. Let's go ahead and figure it out and simplify it. And again, I don't care if you type the entire thing into your calculator like I'm going to, or if you don't trust yourself to write expressions so you do it one step at a time, like Mary Sella did on the last problem. As long as we're all doing true math, it's gonna go ahead and come out to the same answer, okay, y'all? Okay, and you guys check me, check me, check me. Keep me from looking foolish on the internet, you guys. This is what I got. Yes. So you got okay. it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So I want it in context. So let's see, the final bill is $34.13. Pretend like I wrote that all as one sentence. The final bill is $34.13. Does that make sense to us? Is yes. that a logical bill for buying a few school supplies? Too cheap. <laughs> they got it off cheap. <laughs> all the parents here are like, you know how many hundreds I spent? Anyway. Cool, oh. let's go do our last problem. David's yawning, so we better get to the last problem. It's no good. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, how can you make such an easy thing take so long, Kate? <laughs> this is a particular skill of mine, y'all. <laughs> so let's look at eight. A furniture store charges $1,199.99 for a certain sofa and love seat combo. Customers also have the option of using a payment plan where they pay $399.99 down and $99.99 a month for a year. I feel like a commercial. <laughs> How much will the customer save by paying cash for the furniture? Okay, what is our question? How much will the customer save? How much will the customer save by paying cash? Wonderful. Now, let's paraphrase this. 
how much cash will customers spend on the furniture? You know, David, I don't actually agree that that's the same thing. I already know how much cash he's going to spend if he does it in cash. If he's paying in cash, he's going to get charged this first amount, $1,199.99. But they're asking me something slightly different. They're asking me how much will a customer save yeah. if he pays that amount? How much okay. will the what are they asking me to do right with it? That Say that again? I kind of ran right past that one. Yeah, which is the point of this lesson most people do. So don't feel bad or anything, David. You're like you're like my poster boy for <laughs> we're drunk, <laughs> drunk, drunk, you poor thing. Um, but yeah, that's what a lot of us do. We just rush past and assume we know. So let's try again then. How much will the customer save by paying cash for the furniture? Help me paraphrase that. What are they looking for? They want to know how much you're going to save. Yeah. Would we say if, for buying cash or for paying cash? Mm -hmm. What were you saying, Nicole? If a customer pays by cash, how much will he save? Sure. So you flip the order of it, but we're still um, saying kind of the same thing. So let's compare it instead of what? If he pays cash instead of what? What are we comparing it to? What is the difference? It is a difference problem. Yes. If he pays cash instead of what? What would be the other option? A payment plan. Mm -hmm. So if he pays cash instead of the payment plan, what's the difference? I love that. Yeah, we're comparing two prices. That savings is the difference between the two. So obviously, what's the difference? I got a subtraction going on somewhere. Okay, so what do I know? What's been given? Uh, the amount. Yeah, which, which amount? The total. Oh, the, this one? Of yes. the, yeah, the certain sofa. Right. And love seat combo. Okay. So that's that. That's the price Maricela's calling it. Okay, yeah. so I'll write that down down here. So Maricela, we have the pa price. Is this the price for the payment plan or the cash price? This cash is the cash price. Cash price. And I want to be really clear what my numbers represent before I start my setup. Okay, uh, what else do we know? Uh, we also know how much you pay down if you do the payment plan. Okay, so if you do the payment plan, you pay $39.99 down. And then you pay $9.99 a month after for a solid year. For a solid year. Okay, let's organize that information. Now, all of that has to do with payment plan. So I'm going to be nice to myself because I know I make less errors when I organize my givens. And I'm going to come over here. The payment plan has a couple of fees. First, there's that down payment. Guys, how many times do you pay, pay a down payment? One. Exactly. One time fee. Mm -hmm. And then we have another one. We have this ninety nine ninety nine a month. Are we going to pay that one once or multiple times? A lot. Yeah, we're going to pay it a lot. Well, how many times are we going to pay it? Twelve. Exactly. Where'd you guys find the twelve? There wasn't even a twelve in the flipping problem. There's how twelve many months or in a year. Thank you. Okay. So if I'm paying $99.99 per month, in order to know how many times I pay it, I need to know how many months, not how many years. Okay. Thank you guys for having math common sense and not trying to tell me I just pay that once for the one year. Okay. And some people say random things, by the way, that you guys, they get so excited. They're like, oh, month has 30 days. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, a month does have 30 days. Thank you for remembering that. But I'm not paying this every day. Hallelujah. That would suck. <laughs> Yeah, heck no. A lot of operations going on here. What kinds of operations are you guys noticing here? Multiplication. Multiplication. Why do you say multiplication? What part of this problem told you multiplication, Marisela? Because I have to multiply uh, 99.99 .99 for 12 months. Absolutely. We have this repeated fee. I'm paying that over and over and over again. Definitely multiplication. What other operations do you notice? Addition. 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 Yeah, what told you Addition. Oh, you're going to have to add the down payment plus... The down payment the is just a one-time fee that's getting put into the cost. That is added on into the payment plan. Brilliant. I see another operation. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, uh, subtraction. Subtraction. What told you subtraction was going to go on? Because we we're going to have the tour and they subtract for the cash. Yes, right. exactly. I'm comparing the difference of those two prices. I'm going to have to subtract those two prices. Okay, guys, so here's the deal. Order doesn't matter too much when you multiply. Order doesn't matter too much when you add. But guess what? Order matters when you subtract. So before I start putting these numbers around, we know when we want to find the difference, we need, uh, you know, the number, the bigger number to come first. What's going to be bigger, the cash payment or the payment plan amount? The payment. 
Yeah, absolutely. Because it says how much will the customer save by paying cash? It's obviously cheaper to pay cash. So when I go to write my expression, let me give myself some room. I don't have enough room here. I'm going to need to start with the payment plan total, like how much I'll pay with the payment plan, and then subtract the cash price. Is everybody cool with that? I'm just doing a little bit of planning. So help me, guys. If I do the payment plan, what am I going to pay? Give me the numbers and the expressions. How could I write that? Uh, 99.99. Mm -hmm. 12 times. 12 times. So times 12. And then you guys told me, and there was another fee as part of the payment plan. You told me you wanted to add in what? 399.99. Good. I'm going to add in that one-time fee. Okay, wonderful. And from this whole thing, and you can use parentheses or it actually doesn't matter in this case if you don't use parentheses. Um, as it turns out, it wouldn't affect the order of operation, but it certainly wouldn't hurt to put them in there. Uh, from that whole thing, I'm going to subtract out because I'm comparing it the difference of the cash price you guys told me. What's the cash price? Uh, 1,199.99. Beautiful. And what an ugly expression. Again, on the GED, you could be asked to write an expression or you could just be asked to solve the problem. So if you're really struggling with, Kate, I hate your expressions. I'd rather do this my way. Don't freak out too much. You, we would still get to the same solution. So let's figure out the solution together. What would we get? $399.88. Yep, that is exactly it. So the solution is, sorry, I took a double take at it and then went and did it one step at a time instead of the entire expression because it looked like it was too close to the down payment. But indeed, that is right. $399.88 is what? Help me put it in a complete sentence. How much will save? Does it make sense for him to save a lot of money by paying cash? Well, yeah, that's how those stupid yeah. rent-to-own places get you guys. Every time we do word problems, I always include these kind of problems because I have this real problem. I have this real like issue with rent-to-own places. I think they're like robbing the poor. I'm like, everybody needs to be math literate so they don't get robbed. Thank you so much for joining me today in our virtual GED class where we talked about decoding word problems. We're going to keep adding to our skills that we have for working word problems. So I hope you'll join us. See you next week.